If you enjoy this video, consider clicking the subscribe button and follow our adventures sailing around the world. Hi, we're the James family. Are you sick of your day-to-day -day life? Ever thought about doing something different? Well, we did just that. We bought an unfinished aluminium catamaran and we're fixing her up as we sail around the world. Come along for the journey and click subscribe. Daddy? Mommy? So I'm going to bring you guys downstairs to our spare cabin. So come on and follow me down here. And this is our guest cabin. <laughs> there is no way that we can have any guests on board with us at the moment. So Sam has filled this up with um, improvements to the boat. So in the back corner over there, we have a roll of 134 meters of fiberglass. Up here, we have solar controllers, solar uh, battery chargers. We've got mesh for the windows. We've got foam for some fiberglassing projects. Um, down here we have the project for the sail bag and one of my favorites is right behind here and this is my favorite thing that has arrived this is all new B&G equipment um, so we have a whole new radar and stuff we are very excited about it I don't think either of us are very excited to go up the mast to install it um, but we're really excited to have some working equipment on board and very excited to have radar again. So that will be very cool. Um, what else? There's foam. We're going to be making a captain's collar. So we've got foam up there. And um, this is the spare cabin at the moment. <laughs> and let's head on upstairs. In this cabin, we've got a sink and a new toilet up over the back there, styling like everyone else. We've got a few bits and pieces, some new to us fans, and I can't wait to show you what I've got in store for this chondroid. It's genius. So on top of all of those awesome stuff that we have down in the spare cabin, we've also got other stuff all throughout the boat. So we plan to do a, a hybrid rigging system. As you're probably aware, our rigging is 20 years old. So we've got a whole heap of new Dyneema here, different sizes to go through. Plus we have new wires to install as well. And then on top of that, we have a new fuel polishing system to make up with the large Raycors. <laughs> Over here, we have a whole heap of high density foam. So we've got all sorts of neat projects in store for you guys over the next couple of months. And down below the nav station, we have new deck paint. New deck paint. Resin. We've got enough paint. We've got anti foul. We've got enough paint to paint the whole boat. Um, and so over the next couple of months, we're going to have quite a few exciting projects. I'd love to show you the type of navigation equipment that we chose, how to install it, uh, how we install it, and why we chose that equipment. We'll also go through why we chose the hybrid uh, rigging system of a cross between Dyneema and wire. Um, but before we go through all that, there's a very common question that we always get asked, and that's how do we afford this lifestyle? How and do we afford this? How did Sam afford all these new, <laughs> new toys? So the way we did it was I put the steel caps back on and uh, went back to work. So Sam's been working tug and barge and we've gotten some cool toys. Yeah. 
Yeah, but uh, I've just finished uh, all the work, so we'll be able to throw those steel caps out and uh, start with all the projects and all the stuff we've been buying while I've been at work. But before we do that, I'll just show you a little bit about what I've been up to. We're in the port city of Townsville, and I've been working for the Townsville port. Basically, what I've been doing is assisting in widening the harbour so that larger cruise ships can come and visit Townsville and enjoy the beautiful city just as we have for the last few months. On this project, I had the pleasure of working with the largest backhoe dredge in the Southern Hemisphere called the Woomera. Now, the Woomera would scoop the mud off the bottom, place it into the barge, and then my job was to drive the tug that would push the barge in back to shore so that we could get it unloaded and place all of the spoil into this area here. So the second part of the project was to fill this area up with all the mud that we took out of the harbour. The way it was done was with 90 tonne excavators. Uh, what they would do is they would scoop the mud out of the barges and they'd put them in the back of what are called moxies. Now, moxies are a six-wheel drive tip truck, and they would then cart all of the mud or spoil to the reclamation area, and that is where we would put it. And as you can see from this picture here, you've got the tug at the temporary unloading facility alongside, and there they're starting to fill in that big hole. And we've almost finished it, folks. It's almost all done. But we've got a job on. Let me show you exactly how we do it. So these barges are 73 metres long. When they're fully loaded, they're 3.8 metres in draft and weigh just shy of 6,000 tonnes. To put that into perspective, Emma, our boat, fully loaded, weighs 16.5 tonnes. One bucket from the Woomera of clay is around about 25 tonnes worth of weight. So every bucket load, they could easily fit the weight of our yacht in it to place in these barges. What we have in the close quarters situation up ahead, you'll see that little black tug there. That's an assist tug, and it just helps us move it around. And to put it into perspective, you can see there's two men up there just releasing the ropes, one on the tug. And one on the barge. And that's how tall and big everything is. Now we take the barge out and then we land it alongside the Woomera. And yes, folks, it is all 24 hour operations. So it happens day or night. The shifts that we do are 12 hour shifts on board the tug. They end up being around about 13 hours once you've finished your transfers ashore and then catch a bus back to where your vehicles are. And uh, unfortunately, most of my shifts were night shifts, um, which means I would start work at 5 o'clock at night and get off at a bit after 5.30 in the morning. Now, here we are parking alongside the Woomera. We have the assist tug, and basically the assist tug just acts like a bow thruster, so I'd either pushes you on or pulls you off and then the primary tug does most of the work and you're the one that just tells the assist tug what to do. When you're in the helm station the view isn't quite as good as what you can see here folks. You can't actually see much at all so you're just listening to the crew's numbers as they tell you how far off you are and everything from there. To give you a bit better of an idea let's have a look at it in daylight. This is an empty one going alongside and this is a full barge about to be lifted off the Woomera. Now you can see passing our bow is another tug and barge. With all of these projects, production is very important. And so what that means is they want to minimise the amount of time the Woomera isn't dredging. So that barge is there to be landed alongside as soon as we lift this one off. Now to put it into perspective again, that's a six foot tall human on the back of the barge there. At the very front of the barge, they are 60 ton excavators. So the barges themselves are 73 meters long or 240 feet long. Now, I've absolutely loved my time here at Townsville and I love working with Tug and Barge 
because every time you lift a full barge off, its manoeuvring characteristics are always slightly different. So that makes it always new, fresh and exciting. If it's trimmed drastically by the bow, it's going to bow steer. Once you go into shallower areas, depending on which way it's trimmed, it's going to take off to that site. If it's trimmed by the stern, it'll bring the pivot point further back. So every single barge is slightly different. On this one, we were quite lucky because we had quite powerful tugs, so our power to weight ratio was very good and it made every move very, very forgiving. But I am looking forward to now that it's over, going back, playing with all the new toys that we've bought for Emma and getting back on the water cruising again. You can see the assist tug has pushed us out. We're on our way, going back to take all the mud to the reclamation area, and he's about to go alongside the other empty barge, put it alongside the Woomera, and so the cycle will keep continuing. So we've just been having a bit of a discussion about whether or not to throw the boots in the bin. And um, I don't know, you guys can let us know what you think, but um, I think they... <laughs> Let's see. See, they're still good. <laughs> what do you mean? Plenty of life left in them. I've got quite fat feet from not wearing uh, shoes too often, and so it takes a bit for me to wear boots in. <laughs> you should not be able to do this with your shoes. Ah, uh, good point. Can I keep the laces? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are, these are going to get tossed. <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting rid of the steel caps and getting back into the proper footwear. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye, my friends. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. If you are enjoying our videos and would like to help support us making videos and content, consider becoming a Patreon. The link is in the description below. And don't forget to click those like and subscribe buttons, and we will see you all next week.